Welcome back to Steve's Small Engine Saloon. Yes, you read that correctly. Chicanic, Donny Boy 73, Steve Small Engine Saloon, all in one interview show. This is Talk and Shop with Walbro. Wait till you see us start fighting like cats and dogs. <laughs> Grab a beer and watch this. Hello and welcome to Walbro's Talking Shop Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Don Mooney, and boy, do we have a fun episode for you today. We are talking shop with some internet influencers. Cannot wait to bring them on. We're going to have Don with the YouTube channel, Don the Small Engine Doctor, also known as Donnie Boy 73 Steve with the YouTube channel, Steve's Small Engine Saloon, and Bree with the YouTube channel, Chicanic. So thank you, all of you, for being with me today. Uh, this is going to be fun. This is awesome. Nice I love it. Thank you. I feel like I want the applause button. Like, yay! <laughs> Just clapping in the <laughs> thank you. Yeah, there you go. I should I should be clapping here. The crowd goes wild. So this really is going to be a lot of fun because I can't wait to hear the backstory of how you kind of got where you're going. And it's so intriguing for so many people because you have tons and tons of viewers and you really are passionate about what you do. So let's get right to it. You all have, I'm sure, fascinating stories of how you basically got started. But with each of you, I want to hear your stories. And Don, you are kind of the veteran here of the group, 15 years of putting out content. So tell me your story of getting things up and running and why YouTube and what was it that you know, you said, hey, I think I want to do this and, and start on something that 15 years ago wasn't nearly as popular as it is today. No, it wasn't. And it was completely different. So I started YouTube as a hobby. Okay. So I made the name Donnie Boy 73 just for fun. It, there was no plans on being the way it is now. Okay. That's why it's Donnie Boy 73. So I did it as a hobby. Uh, for years, I put out content uh, without being monetized because I just like doing the, the video and teaching people. Uh, but I'm also a full-time caregiver to my wife. So um, eventually, YouTube did turn into a job. So I'm able to work from my residence. I also run a full-time shop here as well. And I do the YouTube uh, videos all from my residence. So it, it was kind of a, you know, something that fell in my lap, the, the YouTube videos as they started to gain more momentum. And I just kept going from there and uh, it, it got to where it is now. I love that. And you know what I love, Donnie, really your story of not only, you know, just kind of trying it out as a hobby, but the story yeah, behind absolutely. it. Yeah, the story behind it with your family and a way yeah. to really enable you to be able to work and to be able to take care of your wife. I think that's really beautiful. Oh, yeah, I could have never, I could, like my wife, she's been so bad that you just couldn't leave. Like, you, you just couldn't leave for an eight-hour shift and come back. She couldn't even be left alone. So, it, you know, that's why I had to figure something out to do so that I could do all that and look so at you now it, it, was, it was difficult i mean you know when you start a youtube channel you got to work on it a lot harder than once you're established and once you're established uh you know and and making money from youtube was a bonus it's not the main reason why i did it but it was a bonus plus my shop here so with the shop um and kind of like Bray, she, she runs a shop too. So you get a lot of, of equipment that comes in. It makes it a lot easier to show different things when there's a, a steady flow of equipment coming in. Yeah. It makes it easier. Yeah, I'm sure. And uh, But I, I like doing YouTube. Well, you know, I like doing it. I'm sure, I'm sure Steve and Bree like doing it too. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to hear their stories too. So Don, yeah. you're starting us off because I said you're the veteran of the sure. group. I mean, sure. you've, you've been doing this a while. You're the, the uh, person who's been around the block in the automotive world and on YouTube as well. And I, I think that's great. So let's go to Steve. You've been doing this for five years now, putting out content. So Steve, tell us more about the small engine saloon and how you kind of got your start in YouTube. Um, actually, technically it's six years now. We just had our 
uh, our six year channel anniversary about two weeks ago. So actually six years. Congratulations. Yeah. I need the applause yeah. button again. We need to get sound effects on <laughs> yeah, the yeah. podcast, really. So what was your original <laughs> question? Was it like how you got started? Yeah. What What was it that kind of pulled you in to YouTube? So I, this is kind of a long story. I'm just going to cut this right into a nutshell. Um, <clears throat> about six years ago, I was looking at something on YouTube and I saw this uh, video and it was it was horrible. It was this young kid. He was doing a video on adjusting a weed eater carburetor. And uh, to this day, it's the worst YouTube video I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and, and at that time, I looked under there and he had 17,000 views. And at that time, I actually thought that was staggering. I was just like, how could he have 17,000 views for such a horrible video? I went and showed my wife, April. I said, look at this. This is terrible. Uh, and he has 17,000 views. I want to try this. I think that I could do a way better video. I, mean, I want to see how many views I will get. And she just said, yeah, absolutely. You need a hobby anyway. Same with Donnie just said. She was like, yeah, you need a hobby anyway. And I started it as a hobby. <clears throat> and um, I, I put out my first four videos um, before I even knew I was making money. 100% a hobby. And then one day I was looking, I was figuring out, you know, <clears throat> how to look at the analytics and stuff. And I came across this one thing and it said, fees. $32 in fees. I don't know. I still to this day don't know why they call it fees. And I went and showed my wife and I said, YouTube's charging us for putting videos out. <laughs> and she went, oh, hold on a second. And then 15 minutes later, she comes back and she goes, Steve, YouTube owes us $32. Oh, and I was like, that's I awesome. was like, giddy up. That was yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is cool, and I just thought that was just the most awesome thing. And that was after four videos, and then I just keep pounding them out. Yeah. And you wanted to print that out and frame it. You know, we've got the the first dollar bill. You've got the thirty two dollars paid out by YouTube. But I'm sure it's a lot more. We're not going to ask you how much. So with that, uh, talking about the experience and using it as a hobby, we're going to go to the newbie of sorts, Bree. You have been doing this for about three years and I want to congratulate you as well. We need the applause button again because you have surpassed more than 200,000 followers on YouTube. So congratulations. The clap, 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 clap. So tell me about your story. How did you kind of get involved with YouTube? Well, uh to start out, a lot of people ask how I got started in small engines at all, <laughs> since I'm a woman and you don't see many of them in the profession. Um, and it was in high school, you were able to go to a vocational course at the college. And I, I, I thought, hey, I'm going to do this for a fluff course. It'll be easy A. And it ended up being something I really enjoyed doing. And so the second year I was shop foreman. I had a great teacher. And when I got out of high school, I fell right into a job at a local uh, small engine shop. Um, where I worked there for about two years on the counter selling parts. And I, I can't tell you, a lot of people ask what you need to do to get into small engine repairs. And uh, I can't, the, you learn so much working on the counter. It's invaluable lessons because you're able to help customers, thousands of different questions, you know, hundreds of different products. And you, every time you're looking up a part for a customer, you're able to look at a parts breakdown and it makes you really know of how, the, the way things work. A lot of times when you, you know, look at your lawnmower that you bought and, and you're staring at it, you can't see anything. You don't know what's going on, but being able to work on the counter and help everybody and, and really everybody that comes in, you're able to diagnose, you know, you're helping them diagnose their issues. So you're learning the whole time that you're doing this job. So that was, that was really pertinent to the, this whole process for me. So I worked there for a couple of years. Let's fast forward to 2008 when the economy went to boot and the shop where I had worked at had actually shut, shut down because this entire area was hit pretty hard with the economy uh, being crashed. And uh, at the time, my husband and I, we had a cafe across the street and we went from having 12 employees to having me, one waitress, my husband cooking in the kitchen and bringing my grandmother up there to work the register. It was it was pretty hard during that, that whole time period, but we, we worked really hard for the next few years. And uh, because of the economy crashing, the lawnmower shop that I had worked at had closed and they uh, need it, it had a clientele base dying for it to be open. It had tons, thousands and thousands of parts sitting there waiting to be sold, um, lots of tools and stuff. And it was just it had sat there for three years vacant. And so my husband and I were like, you know, 
I think we could make a go of this. And, and we decided to open it back up in 2011. And we have been chugging it along ever since, which it's, you know, been trial and error, a lot of things, but it, been learning the whole time. And, and it's been really, really doing well for us. We love, we love having this business. So to get into YouTube, um, I really was sitting at work one day by myself and I sat down and I got on YouTube and I just put in, yeah, we'd always thrown the name Chicanic around because that's sort of what I am. I'm a Chicanic. And um, I popped it into YouTube and it was free. Like the name was available and I was excited about that. So I'm like, oh, well, I need to make a video for it. And I sat down, I made a one minute video and I was really just making fun of a customer that came in and told me, you know, that I had not repaired his chainsaw correctly. And that was it. And I, I put it on the back burner. I never thought really much about it again. And that was in 2017 when I actually started the channel. So in, I guess it was uh, 2020, the end of two. 2019 in the beginning of 2020, I was like, you know what? I, I really need to think about this again. I've been watching a lot. I'm, I'm a big into homesteading and gardening. And I was watching, you know, Roots and Refuge is where I got most of my inspiration from. Um, she was just like, pick your camera up and, and just film yourself doing something. And when you're a YouTuber, you realize you want everybody to join in on this. Everybody that, you know, is dying to get into other people's lives and see what's going on and, and learn something you want. To, and so it's really awesome being able to turn this little table in my garage into a classroom. So in the end of 2019, 2020, I made about five videos and I was like, OK, this is pretty fun. We were slow at the shop. I had plenty of time to do it. But then 2020 hit. We all know what happened then. There was the pandemic. And like I've heard Steve say before, also, while everybody was struggling those last those couple of years, our businesses actually thrived because what happens when everybody stays home and they're looking around their house, seeing everything they need to do and all this equipment that's been sitting for years, they need to get fixed. So we actually were slammed all of 2020. I never made another video all year long. And we, we just, we, we were busy, extremely busy. So rolls around to 2022 in May, and I had not thought about the YouTube at all. I had really not been looking at it and I decided to flip it open. And all of a sudden there is a ton of views on one of my videos, how to fix a lawnmower in 10 minutes, you know? <laughs> and I was like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. I have enough, you know, views to be monetized. And, and so I, you know, applied for that. Two days later, I have monetization and I was putting out videos every three days after that. I was just like, this is insane. You're like Steve was saying, when you get your first few dollars, you're like, they paid me for that. <laughs> you know, it, it really is a shocking experience. And so I've just been trucking along ever since trying to make, you know, one to two videos a week. You know what, Donnie, I have to go back to you with this because you starting 15 years ago, you know, for Stephen Bree, monetization was was pretty much if it wasn't in full effect when you started Steve it was starting to get there at least you know minimally it's completely changed now but Donnie when you're starting out as you said for a variety of reasons that you kind of you know chose that that route kind of for fun what were your thoughts when all of a sudden YouTube is starting to pay people to be on YouTube yeah it gave me an incentive yeah. i mean it you know i'm thinking you know, why go work for other people for way less money? When you can work for Donnie. When yeah. you can be your own boss. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I have to say, I have to say, it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> for, yeah. Working for yourself. <laughs> ever. And you're yeah. the best and boss I'm, you've ever had, right? I'm sure Steve and Bree would oh, say yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That YouTube is the best job that they've ever had and, yeah. and I've ever had. Yeah. That's Agreed. awesome. No doubt. It's hard work, though. Well, let me get into that. Hard work. People yeah. don't realize just how no. hard it is to put stuff on YouTube because you're all going about your daily lives. You're doing this in real time, but capturing that on video and editing and pushing things out is a completely different beast. So let's talk about content because a lot of people, if you've never been on the influencer side, don't realize how much goes into just planning content and, and executing that to push it out to the audience. So where do you get the inspiration for that? Because a lot of times it's very unique. I think you do a lot of videos based on product that's coming in, things that you're already working on, maybe repair work. So talk to me about that. Where do you get the influence there? Because you want to keep up with all the videos because people want to see more from you. But do you ever hit like a wall? Like where do you constantly go to try to get that inspiration? Yeah, you, you actually never hit a wall. At the beginning, when you start YouTube, you, you might think that. 
that at some point I'm going to run out of ideas. But the more you do it, the more ideas you have that you actually don't have time to do them all. It goes the other way. The, the content is also user, uh, what viewer generated as well from their questions. Mm, interesting. You know, like Steve did a whole bunch of uh, Q and A's, and you know that that's all driven by the viewers. They ask that. Um, also, like customers, I see Bree makes a lot of videos about you know her customers. I make some too. I mean, I don't talk about the customers, but I, you know, customer states this and that. Uh, so a lot, a lot of the content, it just kind of, the more you do it, the more it kind of flows in your mind. And once you, you've gone through the, you know, all the technical stuff, you know, using the camera editing and all that stuff, uh, once you've passed that, it, it's a lot easier. Cause when I started, I, I always had a background in video editing, but you know, it went from analog to high definition in about, you know, the mid, uh, I don't know, 2005 up, you started seeing high definition, but there was still a lot of old like tape cameras and stuff like that. So, you know, editing video, cause if you go watch my really old videos, they're only 480p. Okay. They're 480p. Vintage, then I Donnie, said, vintage. vintage. It's old. <laughs> And I looked younger in them too. So I wasn't going to say anything. But. Uh, no, I know. I didn't have three years, but. So when I switched from analog to high definition, it was like, oh man, like this computer can't handle it. Like the voice and the movements were not together, not in sync. So I had to upgrade everything. Okay. I just go out and buy gaming computers because they're fully loaded with the best video card processor. It just, fixes the whole problem. Uh, so I to upgrade everything, computers, laptops, camcorders. It was insane, you know, but now it's easier for people to get on YouTube because, and especially to monetize. So it was hard to monetize a channel, let's say in 2010. It was a lot harder than now. You had to go through different processes and, and I think at that point, YouTube was actually owned by YouTube. Google. Or yeah, it was, but oh, then yeah, Google yeah. bought it at yeah. some point. So then all the policies changed. Uh, so there's been major, major, major changes. But the good thing uh, is the content better. keeps content keeps going because, as you said, that there's always that that driving force. Let me ask oh, you. Oh, yeah. So I got off track here. Yeah. yeah. So the content <laughs> is always there. The problem with me, like I said, I'm a caregiver. So that's like another job. Uh, I'm not saying it in a bad way, but it, it is it is draining on a person. But it is what you should do. Um, and I edit, I film and edit all my videos myself. Above and beyond that, so that's a lot of work too, because you can't just have anybody edit your videos. Because if you made a mistake in the video, they may not catch on to that. Because they're not so as knowledgeable you as you are. About the top. Yeah, if you had to do, <laughs> if you had to film the same take like two, three times, yeah. they may not know which one to keep in the video editing. So you, you unless whoever's editing it knows about small engines. And they probably yeah. don't. That's why you're doing the video to help exactly. people. <laughs> yeah. I, get, I get solicited all the time from these, I don't know if it's a scam or what, you know. Oh, we can edit your videos, but I, I don't want to pay somebody to edit my videos. Yeah, I could say I that. Uh, I wouldn't want so somebody so to edit my videos for free, not to mention pay for it. No. Yeah. Exactly. No. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even want them to do it for free either, unless they knew what they were doing. Right. Yeah. Uh, but but the content, there's, uh, you'll never run out of ideas. Well, let me ask you, Steve and Bri, I'd love to get your take on this. Steve, let's start with you. What's your take on that? Um, Steve Small Engine Saloon. I mean, just by the word saloon, I could maybe guess where you get some inspiration if you're, <laughs> if you're <laughs> having a few cans, but where does the content come from your side? Well, I think Don, Donnie just touched on that pretty much for me um, with just comments, six years, comments and emails all coming through um, from my from my videos. And I get the ideas from from that pretty much. 
Like Donnie also touched on this with because Don and Bree both have working shops. They have customers bringing their stuff in and then boom, there you go. You got this thing and you can do a video on it. I actually don't have a working shop. I could, I mean, I have everything I need to, but, but, uh, you know, it's not like I have a sandwich board down at the end of the driveway saying Steve Small Engine Saloon open, come on in, you know, bring your stuff in. I do, I do repairs for family and friends and the occasional friend of a friend. And I get some of those come in where I can do a video on them. <clears throat> but other than that, it's just comments and, uh, and emails. And I also on my website, stevesmallandersaloon.com, there's a tab there. You, you can put your video suggestions in. It's an actual form you can fill out and uh, get tons of those on a weekly basis. I don't even know tons. And I, so I get lots of ideas from that too. It's a shame Steve's really not very good at marketing Steve's small engine saloon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's good. <laughs> let me let me turn to you, Bree, with regard mm-hmm. to the content because you know Steve and Donnie made great points, and you all I think talked about one another. Well, Bree, we haven't heard from you yet, but with regard to getting that that inspiration, uh, does it come from the same place as as both Steve and Donnie were saying? Absolutely. Ideally, when I'm I'm still at my job all day long, working on units all day long, so I'm probably seeing at least five units on my bench every single day, hoping that one of them will be some common issue that. I think is video worthy for everybody. And hopefully there's some kind of trick I can tell them to make it more interesting in the video. So um, yeah, that absolutely attributes to a lot of it. Cause when you go digging around, when you see my videos like trash to treasure, treasure videos, that's when I've had to go dig for something to, to be like, okay, let's make a video out of this you know, piece of equipment that's been sitting in my shop for four years or whatever. But yeah, it's definitely helps with that, you know, rotating of equipment coming across the bench. But So um, when I first started, I felt like I was playing catch up. So anything that came through, if it was a rewind or a simple, you know, plug boot or anything, I was making videos on it because I wanted, you know, all my, I was playing catch up. I had to have all my utilitarian videos out there so people could, you know, use it, find it, whatever. But um, hopefully now that I've pretty much knocked most of those out of the way, I can branch out a little bit and do some other stuff. So you have the content ideas. We've all established that and heard from all of you kind of where you kind of get those ideas for content, but putting it all together, even if you've already done it 10, 20, 30, how many dozen times, videoing it and editing it and pushing it out once again is is a big deal. So let's talk about the time involved. And Donna, you talked about, you know, your caregiver. Um, that's another job in and of itself. And both Bree and Steve, I mean, clearly you all have busy lives. So how much time are you putting into the creation of content and do you have help? Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, I film, edit, and do everything myself. No help. Um, there's a lot of time involved in one video. Um, it depends on the type of video. So if it's a video where you're talking, it's easier to edit. If it's a video where you're doing a natural repair and you want to show different angles up close, proper angles that aren't uh, video clips that aren't shaking, that ups your editing time by two, three times. So I could have a five minute video that took me um, five hours to make from start to finish. Filming, editing, uploading. I'd rather go quality over quantity Uh, because you know nowadays you can just film a high quality video with your phone if you want and just throw it on there if you want it all depends what you want your videos to look like Um, but you know it like I say it's hard work but once you're used to it it's not as hard but you got to put the time in so I get a lot of people they ask me Oh, what's it take to to have a YouTube channel? And they'll make one or two videos and quit. And what I tell them is like, uh, you know, at nighttime, instead of watching TV, you might have to be on your computer editing videos. Okay. And you're going to have to, if if you want to have even have a business, you're going to have to be up early every morning. You can't get up when you want to and, and go when you feel like it. Uh, so basically, the YouTube part of it, uh, what I found is consistency. 
Okay, so you just do what you're good at doing consistently. Not not what others are doing, but just what you're able to do consistently is what will make you have a good YouTube channel. Steve or Bree, want to kind of chime in there and give your thoughts with regard to the, the time taken and uh, the help maybe given from friends or family members or maybe not? Um, well, I actually very embarrassed to film in front of the people. That's why... <laughs> I, I do it all by myself. Even if my husband's there, I'll jumble my words like crazy. He could walk out of the room and I can do a two minute spiel like right there. So um, everything I do, I do pretty much by myself. But unfortunately, I'm not able to film all day long while I'm at the shop because like I said, I'm on the counter. I actually work on every unit sitting right in front of me as customers walk in. They can see me and, and everything spread out right there. So I'm helping customers constantly. There's cars driving by. It's just not a good environment to do that. And if there's any kind of heat, I've got an air conditioning unit right next to my face. So it's either... Um, real loud, noisy, or I do it after work. So I prefer to do everything after work. So on top of working, you know, 40, 50 hours a week, I come home or I might, I might film at the shop, but a lot of times I don't want to hang out there after I've worked there all day. So I'll bring whatever unit I'm working on to the house. And it usually takes, I mean, like uh, Don said, it depends on what you're working on. If I'm doing just a rant video, I love those because I can just sit here and rant for a second and, and, and edit that real quick. But if I'm actually repairing something, it could be two to five hours and that's after work. And I'm really bad about, waiting to the last minute. So as soon as I film something, I, I go ahead and edit it and I put it out the next day. So um, after two to five hours, so sometimes the things take, take two days, but two to five hours of filming and then at least three hours of editing, creating a thumbnail, getting it uploaded because sometimes my internet's slow. Um, it's if you see a video at eight o'clock in the morning, you can bet that I was up till at least two o'clock in the morning working and produ producing it and getting it up there. So yeah. <laughs> you're pulling an all nighter before those videos. Yes, definitely. So you can, you know, add that math up in your head. It's a lot yeah. <laughs> of time. Yeah. And Steve, what about it's more, you? It's more though. Yeah. Of course. Um, I agree with both of them. It's the time involved to put to actually uh, for actually uh, publish a video on YouTube for the public to see. Um, it depends on what video it is, and it depends on uh, all kinds of things. Uh, as far as help goes, do I have any help? I have my wife, April, uh, uh, unbelievable amount of help. I do the, I do the, I come up with the ideas. I come up with uh, filming it. I film it, and then I edit it. <clears throat> and and do all that stuff, but a lot of people don't realize there's so much to making a YouTube video behind the scenes that nobody thinks about. Like she, the, our website, stevesmallandersaloon.com. I I think it's an awesome website. Hundred percent April. I have no idea how to. No idea wow. how to do that. <laughs> and Steve. <laughs> Steve's lucky. You're lucky to have a, a wife that helps and Steve, like and that. And Steve Small Engine <laughs> Saloon is actually an incorporated business. So we have, you know, uh, workers' compensation and insurance. And we pay our taxes and everything, you know, all that kind of stuff. All the business end of it, I have no idea how to do that. That's 100% April. And uh, she also proofreads. This is a I, – I call it proofreading. And this is a huge help. This is a huge help. You get a second set of eyes on something. So, so I'll, I'll have a video and I'll edit it as best I can. And I go, okay, this is, I think this is good. I think I can put this on YouTube. And then April, can you watch this second set of eyes from, a, from somebody's perspective? That's not a small engine mechanic. And she watches it and she'll say, okay, um, you repeated yourself here twice. You need to cut this out. And okay, and then she'll say, I didn't understand what you were saying right here. I think you should put another close up right here so I understand more of what's going on here. So she gives me all these tips and stuff, uh, suggestions on how to make the video better. And 100% of the time, I make all those changes that she suggests, and the video is 100 times better every time. So, and that's a huge help. That's a huge help. I hope April's getting paid. 
handsomely for her services here, Steve. Yeah, she she (laughs) shouldn't have been on here today. Yeah. Hey, Steve, she should have been here today. Yeah, April should have been one of our guests. (laughs) She's she's, she's busy proofreading the video right now. (laughs) Did she proofread the the sweatshirt? This thing? (laughs) Actually, (laughs) April made this. Like, she, she actually... No way, Steve. April are you kidding me? This in this in the saloon, uh, the, it's called the something saloon font. You know, it looks like the old cowboy font. You know, yeah, she made yeah. that 100. percent I think we all need an April. I want an April. I want an April oh, assistant. No. Let's all get an April <laughs> assistant. An April, an April, but a husband like that. Hey, I, I, will, I will say this 100. percent Steve Small Engine Saloon is a successful YouTube channel. 60 percent because of April. 40% because of me. I am wow. not even kidding. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, more, Steve. Even more. Yeah. Wow. Make, you, sure she, make sure she watches this. I was going to say, you made April <laughs> very happy with this, with this last answer. Point. And unfortunately, we're out of time, but we don't want you to miss a thing. So we are going to split this conversation and continue it in part two. Too. So I want to thank you for joining us today for the first part of the Talking Shop podcast brought to you by Walbro with our special YouTube influencer guests. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I have. And I highly encourage you to be on the lookout for part two because it is good. The conversation continues, the fun, the laughs, the stories. You will not want to miss it. So please stick around for the second part of this podcast episode. Once again, thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Michelle Dawn Mooney, and we hope to see you soon. Well, I hope you like that as much as I do. I have to say a couple thank yous here. Bob McHugh, thank you. Walbro, thank you. Market Scale, thank you. The person who edited that video, absolute genius, because I know you had your work cut out for you on that one. Uh, speaking of editing, part two is coming out, just like uh, Michelle just said. And uh, I think that's the reason that part two is not out yet. They're still in the editing process of that. When I see it, you're going to see it too. Stay tuned for that video. And until then, uh, Steve out.